All right. Hey, well, it, uh, it seems we talked to this, uh, I think we talked to this guy more than we talked to anybody on these, uh, on our Direct Motocross podcasts. Uh, once again, he has done something for the first time and conquered it. Uh, we're talking about Tyler Medallia here, of course. Uh, Tyler, buddy, uh, thanks for chatting with us today. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad to, glad that you've uh, kind of you know, showed some interest into this because it's kind of um, a little bit more of an off the beaten path type of event. So it's definitely f- um, pretty far from motocross, but it's good. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty stoked to have done it and for the first time and, and I really enjoy myself. All right. Now, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about what is advertised as Canada's toughest race, end quote, or event. I'm not sure what they call it, but the, uh, the Corduroy Enduro, it's been around since like the 50s. Um, it's an off-road event. It's an event that I've been trying to get to for the past bunch of years. And again, I tried to this time, but it, uh, it ended up on the same weekend as the Supercross at Gopher Dunes. And I just didn't make it happen. And again, like you said, it is off the beaten path and it's a little different from moto things, but a lot of motocross people try both things. And I, you know what I mean? I think we all have an appreciation for both disciplines of the sport, but you went and did it for the first time. I can't believe this is the first time you've done it. Is that just a scheduling thing? Yeah, that's pretty much, it's pretty much it. Like the same thing as you were saying, like I've, I've always, there's been several times where I've been, you know, kind of pre-entered and, and had planned on doing it because I, I really enjoyed this type of format. It's like similar to six days. So, um, but yeah, like then I would get picked for donations last minute or, you know what I mean? Something like that would pop up and, um, yeah. And then, you know, my schedule is pretty busy as it is. So it's been, it's been tough. And, um, so yeah, so I was pretty excited to, to finally be able to kind of commit to it and, and make uh, my first appearance so and uh, yeah and it was uh, it was good and like yeah like you say there's a lot of people that do it i mean there was 700 bikes so um basically the the event was sold out so it's um it's something that everybody that if you're really serious and and love uh riding off road and it's something that you should definitely put on your bucket list because it's you you get the you get a you know the best bang for your buck you you ride a ton um, the, ch- the, the course is challenging from e- for every, you know, skill level and, uh, yeah. And this is just a super good vibe. Hey, I got to ask you, well, we'll obviously, I want to get you to take us through the entire event for us here in a minute, but, uh, uh, Jeff McConkey tried it a bunch of years and does it make sense now that, uh, why a guy like him did not make it? <laughs> yeah. Change? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's different type of riding, man. You gotta be you kind of got to get used to being uncomfortable because your bike, um, there's a lot of, you know, there's stuff in the ground and you have to pay attention and it's not like a motocross track where you have everything memorized and you know, and even with cross country, you can walk the track and you kind of know where you're going and you do laps. Whereas this is 15 unique tests. So you got to kind of realize that you're going to be hitting stuff for the first time every time you're trying to go as hard as you can in these tests. And, the bike really, and I mean, it doesn't matter whether you have hard enduro suspension, motocross suspension, when you hit rocks, the bike does what it does. So, <laughs> um, yeah. And it's just, it's one of those things that you kind of got to get used to the feeling of being uncomfortable and kind of just, yeah, just let it happen and know that, you know, everybody kind of goes through the same sort of, uh, feeling. So you probably, I'm guessing you would never hear somebody at an enduro or at the, the corduroy enduro say something like, I just hit my marks. <laughs> yeah yeah there's no marks you're you're hitting no marks here if you're you're putting marks on trees that's what you're doing and your bike is putting rock you're, the rocks are putting marks on your bike that's for sure right now i just i just saw on uh, on instagram stories there our guy out, out in alberta jared stock he just put up a little thing i guess he damaged his foot and did some damage to look like a, a birch tree or something at uh... <laughs> yeah that was at my place that was well, at, that was at your place. place yeah yeah we were so me and owen mckill and Jared are all together right now because we went went to the Corduroy, and then um, a, a lot of people are racing the final round of FMSQ this weekend at Phil Chenet's at Chenet Land in Victoriaville, Quebec. Right. So we stopped at uh, my dad's place um, to kind of clean everything from the cord, and and then uh, yeah, I, we have we cleaned up some of my old trails from when I was a kid, and and uh, we had the the motocross track and the the trails in a good, uh, good little loop. And so the story with Jared stocks foot is that we, 
we stole all my dad's Milwaukee power tools. So we used the whippersnipper and the <laughs> chainsaw, but they're all electric. Oh, yeah. So we got three cores and we're all tired from the cord and sore. So we like, we're just kind of like making sure that we can go through the trail. And then the, the final battery died at that tree. And <laughs> we're like, ah, well, at least we know this one's here. <laughs> and then sure enough, Jared clips his foot on it and swells everything up. It's pretty good. It's pretty funny. Uh, okay. He's okay. Well, that's yeah. your dad must be in, uh, in his glories and he loves, uh, he probably misses those days having uh, you and a bunch of guys at his place. Yeah, and he didn't get to do it because he's visiting. He's out in Nova Scotia visiting, so he didn't get to see it. We just took over the ranch. Oh, so we man. had to feed a stupid deer and all this other shit. So <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, you know what else I can't believe? I've never been to the Corduroy Enduro, and I have never been to your dad's place. You have got to go there, especially before Sandalee. Because we're always there riding and training before Sandalee anyways. So I know, I'm not be sure. a good time anyway. I'm not sure why it never works out. It just hasn't. I, I, it, we came close last year, but it uh, didn't happen. But. Yeah, well, yeah, you're always invited. <laughs> when he's not there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, well, hey, let's, let's talk a bit about uh, some details on this event. Like, okay, so obviously you're, uh, the plan worked out because, uh, fortunately, air quote, you didn't get cho- – you're not on Team Canada Motocross of Nation, which happens next week. So when yeah. you found that out, I'm assuming then you went, okay, doing the corduroy. Is that how it happened? Um, a little bit. And a little bit, too, is that we're going to get uh, – um, I was going to do the, the Supercross stuff um, for for the my team, um, <clears throat> but I hadn't been on the Supercross track in, well, since the last time we did it in 2019, um, and I just, you know, with, the, with what I'm comfortable with, I don't like, uh, there's a certain type of racing that I can show up, like, off the couch, like motocross and hair scrambles and stuff. But for, for supercross stuff, I, I'd like to have the bike set up and I'd like to have some practice. And, um, yeah, we had delays and bikes and all this other stuff. So there was no way that I could have got a single day in hmm. on the supercross track. And I just didn't think that was safe for me to, for me to race. Um, just, just like, yeah, I'm just not really a supercross guy. So, well, hey, um, yeah. Yeah, if I remember correctly, things ended early for you last time you did the Supercross there. Yeah, no, it did in 2018 on the 4th. Oh, yeah, it did at Gophers in 2018, yeah. But I did. I ended up doing 2019. Uh, I did the full full arena cross season. I, I don't and even it was know. Okay. What, what but, year is it? I don't um, even know what year it is today. That was, yeah, that so was, it's, it's been a while, right? And like, I haven't even touched Supercross suspension or, or nothing. Like, I just, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just didn't get the chance to. So... With uh, with how it was gonna, with how it was looking for for uh, the stuff, I kind of like anticipated that I'd be, um, yeah, just riding in the woods. And because okay. I had done, there was uh, there's there was two FMS Qs left over, so I knew I was going to be able to do the second, the last one, and for sure fills. Um, the question was the cord, and then yeah, and then once it got closer, I was just like okay, well, I'm likely going to be able to do it. So that's how it came about. Wow. Hey, hey um, speaking of that, like okay, so you got. The FMSQ, you did the other FMSQ. Do you, like, does your body, do your hands and stuff have time to heal before these races, or are you just a wreck going into this next one? No, I, you get. I mean, you kind of get used to it, right? Like, um, I use like a little bit softer grips and stuff, like gooier grips, and um, and then like the, the the bike is um a bit set up. Well, it's softer, softer right. setting, so it doesn't it doesn't beat the crap out of you. And obviously, it's not a four fifty, so. Um, for me and the amount that I already ride and, uh, and do things with my hands and stuff like my, my hands are pretty callous, so I don't, there's not, it's not too bad. It's really just like, you know, um, whether if I crash and, and hurt something during the, the event kind of thing is what would kind of hold me back. But yeah, I mean, once you get used to the off-road kind of world and, and how the volume of riding it is, you cut your body just gets adjusted to it. It's pretty, um, yeah, pretty versatile. <laughs> All right. Oh, by the way, we picked up on your uh, your shameless callus plug there. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Hey, okay. Well, you mentioned the bike. Let's talk. What uh, talk about the bike? Like, uh, so obviously you've got you had a bike already. I mean, obviously you do GNCC stuff, FMSQ. Was this the bike? Tell us what bike it is you ride. And is it the same bike and same setup and stuff? No, the bike thing was interesting too because I got it. Uh, I had it uh, lined up um, because the last few years I've I've been wanting to get Heidi to come ride with me a bit more. And 
she doesn't like the 302 stroke and she definitely doesn't like 450s and she even <laughs> rode the 350 and found that that it was too much and she still didn't enjoy it so i bought her uh from jim coleman at wheel sport he gave me a uh a, a really good deal on a gas gas ec ex 250f okay so i got that for her so we could ride together and then i was going to get a 350 for the woods and um yeah and then i was going to use that bike f- to train for the supercross and all this other stuff, but it never, um, showed up and the GNCC stuff, I, I always just end up bringing parts. So like when I'm training down South of my 450, I'll just bring a big tank and I'll switch over that stuff before the event, uh, okay. that I have to do. So I really just only ever ride GNCCs on a, a motocross practice bike, um, <clears throat> which isn't totally ideal, but, I mean, it's, it, I usually do it for fun and for training anyways, so it doesn't matter. But this one, uh, yeah, so I got this bike for Heidi, and she's been riding a little bit, and it was good. And then I decided to um, steal it from her uh-huh. okay, so you're to, do, to do these races. Yeah. How is that? Does it feel fun to be on the smaller bike again? Oh, man, like, I love it. And just, like, going back to, remember last year I hurt my hand and stuff at, at Walton, but, like, uh, but before that happened, my riding was really good. And, um, yeah, like it was un- kind of unfortunate that I had a bit of a mechanical, um, that caused that crash, but, um, yeah, but like, i I really like riding two fifties and I enjoy it. Um, especially, yeah, just these days, like, um, the four fifty is more definitely work and feels more like a job, you know, every time when I have to ride <laughs> that thing. So, um, I really got, I got on the bike and I just, it's just so much fun. So easy to ride. And yeah. And I mean, like even with the, like, and I just used it completely stock. I put my, I put black wheels on and, uh, my handlebars and hand guards and stuff. But other than that, the bike is, as it shows up, the suspension is standard. Oh, wow. everything. Yeah. So I just put, um, uh, I adjusted the suspension to the sport setting and the, in the manual you spend most of your time on and the lever angles what's that spent most of your time getting the lever angles right yeah 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 <laughs> pretty much got the got the bars and levers dialed in that took most of the time right and then <laughs> um uh, and then yeah i just hopped on it and immediately felt super comfortable and just had a lot of fun and pretty much hijacked it from heidi <sighs> but um yeah just to do these races and i got ready and and that's kind of where we're at okay all right well let's um uh, Let's talk about. I have a couple more questions before I let you break into story time and take us through this whole event here. But uh, who was uh, who was in your crew and stuff? Because obviously the crew ends up being a big part in these off road events. Um, yeah, but with the with the format for this race, it's more of a um, ISDE thing. So oh, you, okay. you have a you have a crew, but you have to do all the work yourself. Gotcha. And so you have to yeah yeah you have to do all the work. The only thing is you can't um, you can't pour in. Um, you, like somebody can pour the gas in and, and fluids for you. That's pretty what pretty much it. Because that obviously takes time for gas to pour into a tank. And you have, like you say, you only have 15 minutes to work on your bike after the day, and then you have 15 minutes in the morning to work on it too. So, um, and then at all the checkpoints, you can you can change certain things. You can work on it there. But um, yeah, but uh, JSR and uh, Mark, the the driver, they had uh, demos set up. It was a big event. Like all the major manufacturers had demo rides oh, going nice. on and, and they had setups, Yamaha beta. And then of course, obviously with us, with Husky and gas, gas and KTM, um, there's e-bikes, there's all kinds of stuff. And I think they're doing the same thing type of, I know KTM and gas, gas and Husky are going to have demos for, uh, here at, uh, Shane land for this last, uh, FMS cube. But, uh, JSR was at all the, all the pit stops helping us out and Mark and, yeah, and then other than that, we were kind of on our own. Awesome. Okay, okay, that's cool. Okay, now I, I mentioned before, so like you said, uh, one of my questions I wanted to ask was about knowing the course, and you said basically, did you kind of have an idea? Or like, or how are you able to, like, just looking at track maps on a two-dimensional piece of paper, or like, did you know what was coming up? Yeah, like, because they're so broad, and there's so many of them, and they're kind of spaced out, like, you know, you can show up a week early and go and, and look at all the tests, and bicycle them or whatever you Mm -hmm. want to do but like by the time you get through the first one you're already kind of like oh yeah i forgot about that oh i forgot this so (laughs) we actually there's one test called greens mountain and it's all it's kind of it's not a hard enduro 
section, but it's really technical and it's all rocks and, you know, we're using gummy tires for these events cause it's really rocky in there. Um, so it was nice to, we walked the one really challenging one to just to make sure we, you know, had an idea when we got to the technical sections where, what you're kind of, were doing. And then otherwise, yeah, there was like, uh, you ride six and a half hours a day, 150 some kilometers a day for the two days. And then, um, yeah. And then you have 15 unique tests, um, starting, oh. yeah. Uh, starting with the, uh, demo course test, which is what we, what the demos rides were on. And then we just hit that backwards. And then the final test is, uh, is a motocross race on like a hybrid enduro cross motocross type type track. Right. All right. Well, okay. That's, so we kind of got the, <laughs> kind of got the, uh, the gist of what, uh, going into it and stuff. I don't know how much you want to take us through, but, uh, I mean, you know, the gun goes off. Is it set up like a, does anyone yell 10 seconds? <laughs> yeah, no, it's not like that. You kind of, you're set up with a, with a row number. So huh. you kind of, you, you start off, um, it's all based on timing. So, um, let's say there's, there's 90 rows. That's, that's every, every minute a new row takes off and oh, you're wow. in rows of seven or six or seven. So it'd be like, my number was 12 F <clears throat> or no, sorry. My number was 12 A. So at nine, let's say that st- the event starts at nine o'clock, yeah. then I would take off at nine twelve, Okay. With my row. And then, and then 13 would be like, if your number was 13 B, you would take off at nine thirteen. but your A, B, C, D all the way like to the, gotcha. you know, whatever six guys. And then that's your row and you ride with these guys all the whole event. Who goes off and who had number one A and stuff? Why would you be 12? That's a bit of a, you're going to hit a lot well, of. Well, because you, you kind of, the um, there's a bunch of brand new trail. So the, the guys that I think that the pros, um, the pros kind of go three quarters of the way to the front. So that way, you know, like six, before there was like around 60 bikes that got through the trails before I got there. So there was kind of an established line so I could safely kind of go fast and see where I was going. Oh, okay. So the, 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 be, the first couple of lines, um, you know, it could have experts in it, could have ladies in it. It could have beginners, intermediates. It could have, it, like it's a, it's a wide range of skill level, but, um, so, but they have a little bit harder time in the brand new stuff because it's fresh and you just follow arrows. So you got to, Kind of, uh, there is a, a lot of tests that have been ran for years. So there's established trail systems. So some, most of the test was, you can kind of easily follow a trail through the bush and, and there was arrows on the trees. Like the navigation was actually really good. There wasn't like the course marking was good. So you, yeah, there wasn't really much, um, for like you get in and then you're like, Oh shit, where do I go? There was not, not really much of that. Maybe okay. one or two. Once or twice, we're in a new test. There was like a kind of like a vague area where you, the guys in front, kind of like you could tell that they didn't know where they were going because there was marks all <laughs> over the ground. So you kind of had to look up and, and look and find an arrow, and then yeah, and then you would get back onto the trail. But um, yeah, so then you just there's 15 tests, and they range from three kilometers would be like the shortest, or 3.5 would be the shortest. And then the longest, the, each day had a marathon um, test. So the first day was 18 kilometers long. And then the second day was 21 kilometers long. Nice. So you race for, you know, you're basically riding. Like my, the longest test I did was 21 and it took me 28 minutes to do. And you're trying to do this as fast as you can and not get lost and uh, yeah, make it to the checkpoints. And it the, there's a lot to take in with the race. You almost... And it, it sounds complicated explaining it, but once you go through it and you experience it, it, it kind of it works pretty easily. So it's easy to kind of follow along with, with how it goes and, and learn the race. Well, so when you're do after a test and stuff, do you end up somewhere random? You don't end up back in yep. the pits or you end up somewhere and you have to have your stuff ready to be to work on? Yeah. So, no, like you could do a tra- – so let's say, let's say that day one is a big, big loop, okay? Along the way, there's time sections. Gotcha. So you take off and then you drive down the road. You go through ATV trails. You go to the side of like farming roads, logging roads, and then you get to a test and you see everybody's collected there. And then again, you go on your minute. So I'll be like the 12th row to the 12th row to <laughs> enter the test. 
And then you kind of establish a pecking order of who's the fastest on your row. So that way you don't have to pass people immediately. Right. But you, but you end up catching, like I was catching up into the row eight and stuff in some of the tests. So I have to pass these guys every single time. Like <laughs> there was a couple of people like, I like Emma Sharpless was in the row in front of me and I was trying not to be too aggressive and like spook her and make them crash. And you, you kind of have to be respectable and, it's tough too because you're you're you got, you're racing and you want to do the best you can and, and the adrenaline's high. It's hard right. not to. It sounds like you might be apologizing to Emma here for something you did. No, I'm not. <laughs> I, 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 you know, there's there may be a couple of people that I spooked, um, but you you know, when when I'm coming up, you can kind of hear the bike like screaming, especially if you hit the F when it's like on the you know we're going through at like ten thousand RPM. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so it was. That, that kind of part of it's cool. So then you have, yeah, then you'll have like a, a workstation. There's two per day so you can get gas and food and uh, refill your, your pack and fix anything on the bike that you need to and then carry some tools or a spare lever and stuff in your in your camelback um, right. just in case something happens on the trail or you need to help out somebody. And Yeah, so like and I if said, something, a lot and, to it. And then like, uh, you know, I asked you or whatever, if something major goes wrong, you can't get outside, your race is done, right? Yeah, like, not really. Like, you, you can be – at certain races, like ISDE, you, you can't really be late. But at this one, you just can't go early, right? Like, I can't oh, show okay. up at, at minute eight and just take off. Like, I when I show up at the at the checkpoints or the tests, if I'm there early, I have to – I can't just leave or right. I'll get, I'll get uh, penalized. But you can be late. Like, you're just – your Getting time starts when your row goes. And have to pass more people, right. right? So your time would start when your row goes, and if you leave after that, that's just added on. Yeah, it's not like <clears throat> you just you just like you have an hour to play with. So if you're behind, if you get to the gas stop like 30 minutes late, then you you're likely to hour out because then you'll show up at the finish line more than an hour behind your minute, and then oh, okay. you 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 get just dis like disqualified. You don't finish. Gotcha, gotcha. And I, let me just apologize. You get apologize. penalized for going early. Right, so you have to, You have to go on your, like I had to go at 12, at the 12 minute line at every uh, test and in every checkpoint. Okay, gotcha. Now let me just apologize, like I was going to say, to uh, everybody listening to this who is a uh, corduroy enduro aficionado. I apologize for my lack of knowledge. I just want, and I'm also asking some pretty basic stuff just for people. It's a motocross website, everybody. So I just want to kind of let everybody else, you know, kind of get the gist of, of how it goes. I've been, I've chased you around some GNCC races and all kinds of stuff. So I have a little yeah. bit of the gist, but I just want to kind of touch on some of the stuff. Now, hey, how about, because uh, like, I know like Tristan Hart, for example, did it and last time, last year, whatever, year before, whatever, but and I know there was that section, that tunnel with rocks, and I know you had to sit there and wait. And then finally, he's like, uh, "Look out, everybody! I got to go through here." Like, are there was that tunnel, weird rock tunnel section in it again, or what was the like a bottleneck? The was... Yeah, the tunnel of love. Yeah, they took they took that out this year. Oh, did they? Um, yeah, I think yeah. It just like I, they they did a good job with like a, adjusting some things from what I've heard um, and making it better because. Like I said, I didn't have any. They they added a, a riverbed section this year at in oh, the I saw Blackberry that. test. I saw that, yeah. And there was a little bit of bottlenecks, but it was wide enough that like even the people that were struggling when they hear it as behind, they kind of just like move their bikes over a little bit enough for you to squeak by. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, but there wasn't much of that. And I guess we were, you know, it's one of the drier ones, so they, there wasn't a lot of mud holes and there wasn't a lot of. Uh, bottlenecks so they're um, not like gncc they're not out there with uh water and making mud sections on purpose yeah no they're not doing that oh no. what no they it's it's hard enough as it is like right. i said like it's 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 really the six days is is good because it's a lot of cross tests so you're in fields and stuff and wide open grass and then you're the transfers are pretty chill like farmers fields and like side roads and stuff this was like pretty rugged terrain and really bumpy and there's really no breaks. Um, this guy on uh, YouTube, is, it's called Zach Attack. He does like these uh, videos where he commentates. He does like some of the stuff, some of the hard enduro stuff like uh, TKO and this and that. Okay. Um, and he commentates the whole time and he, and he actually did a pretty good job of this. Uh, he does like, he's done it a couple of years and he was there this year actually. And he, and he films it and he does like these, um, yeah, it's, it's actually entertaining. If you want to kind of get a gist of 
the terrain and the and the format he does the videos are actually pretty entertaining like even like Talon and them like watching it because he's actually pretty funny okay. and he's got like a he's got like an upstate new york accent so it's, it's uh that's good so zach attack on youtube yeah zach attack one okay. number one all right everybody check, can see. We'll have to check that out and uh yeah um okay so okay so the race i know it uh how did it, uh, it was you, it was Ryder Heacock, and then it was uh, Alexandra Goujon, who we've seen uh, race some motocross stuff too. But how yeah. were you leading throughout the event? Was it close? How did the actual, how did it actually go race wise? Um, race wise was good. I won the first three tests, I think. Um, Evan Smith from the States, uh, the beta rider, he was the closest one to me after day one. Um, Phil, um, Phil had an issue on day one with his shock. And he broke a shifter off in another test. And um, Gojan kind of struggled, he said, on the day one with mistakes and stuff. Actually, Go- Alex Gojan may be one of the most underrated riders we have in Canada. He's actually really, really good. Right. Um, you should probably do uh, do a, an interview with him at some point. He's a good, good guy and, and really, uh, really talented. Um, so then, so after, and then I crashed on, I crashed on one test day one um and then i think i won the rest of them so i won all but one test day one nice um so i had like a minute and a half or so on on evan smith going into day two day two test one i had a really good one so i i i I think i pulled like 30 seconds on second place so it was a good it was a really good test i I actually hit my marks on that one, to be honest. That's funny. Um, and then uh, Evan Smith bike broke on test two, so then he was out. Um, Ryder was on my uh, on my row too, so we were. I was twelve A, and he was twelve B, so it was good because we, you know, um, you kind of had somebody there to push you because mm-hmm. he was riding really well as well. Nice. Um, and he. And he's familiar with those terrain, like the with the tests and and where we were at. So I could kind of pick his brain at the test. To, you know, he'd give me some tips on what, what's to come. So I wasn't so blind going to some of the sections. But um, but that yeah, he rode great. And then um, Nick Faringer was another guy from the states that was on a Sherco, and he uh, he was second after Evan Smith's bike broke. And then on the last test, day two, before the motocross race, he broke his wrist. Oh, shit. So then there was this big battle for set. Well, I guess it was it, the big battle was for third overall because Phil had made up a bunch of time. Um, uh, and then Owen McKill was tight there. Gojan was riding a lot better. Day two, he was ripping. And... Um, yeah, and then so so then Nick was out, and then that put Ryder back into second overall. And yeah, and then with two, the second to last test on day two, I entered the trail and immediately crashed into a tree. Like there was a bit of grass hiding a on the left hand turn. There was a bit of grass hiding something in the in the ground, mm. and I entered the trail and immediately it picked up my front end and I steered right into a tree and hit the my knee right on the direct like direct hit into the tree right on my patella and i was pretty stressed about it because halfway through the test i couldn't bend it and i thought i didn't feel a pop or anything so i was Uh uh, but but it made me feel like i was about i had to puke so i've heard that's not the that's almost like a sign that you've messed up a ligament so i was a little bit stressed there um i got through the test um, and then I was on the transfer to the, the last test of the week and I knew that the last test was a really rocky technical one. So I wasn't really, I was not looking forward to it. <laughs> and like I was during the transit, like I would lift my leg up to see if I could put it out like a turn. And like, I was trying to bend it and, and I couldn't do any, anything with it. It was just extreme. Like, like it felt like my kneecap was going to push right off my mm-hmm. friggin' leg. So the last test, I <clears throat> I um, stood up the entire. It was eight k, and I stood up the whole thing and uh-huh. just kind of trail rode it. But but I kind of technically it worked, 
and uh, I ended up still I ended up still winning the test. So I was pretty much that was probably the one that I was the most proud of, just because it was right. a really technical test. I couldn't s- sit down, and um, and then I still like just kind of didn't make any mistakes and and um, and got through it. And then for the before the final motocross test, we were, we went through a checkpoint so we could go back to our trailers and and get some stuff ready for for the motocross race and I took some ibuprofen and iced it and then taped it up tight. And then it was, uh, it was manageable for the, the final test. Is your knee okay now or did you actually damage anything? Uh, yeah, like it was swollen all week. Um, but now it's, it's starting to loosen up, but I don't think, cause it was stable the whole time. It just really hurt. So the whole, there's bruising where my quad attached and then where my quad attaches. And then in behind my, in behind my leg, there was, into my calf was all swollen <laughs> and so it was really it was really just uh i just smoked it i didn't twist it or anything it just got it just got a bad hit so um yeah so it'll be okay for for this weekend i think oh, so good. we'll see hey you mentioned Sherco. did uh, Guy Giroux do the race uh he was i think he did the race or maybe <laughs> he didn't do the race or he was there he was okay <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just, oh man, I, I had so much. I so much. You have so much stuff going on, and there was so many. There was so many people there, and then you know, it's it's hard to remember exactly. Yeah, of course. Exactly what was going on, and that's a hard, long, Yeah, but it's hard yeah, to forget Guy Giroux. No, I know, I know. <laughs> I, he was there. Like I, I talked to him. I just and uh, maybe did I. I talked to him for sure at the last FMSQ. I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure I see. <laughs> That's funny. I just anyway. I just uh, um, okay. So I know. Of course, uh, let's let's end this. You say it ended. I mean, end this on a motocross uh, note here. You mentioned the last test is the motocross stage. Hey, but first, actually, when you showed up, are people like, "Oh, great, Medallia, the hot shots here"? Was everybody cool with you? Or do you know all these guys? Was it uh, everything fine? Yeah, it wasn't more. It was not more of the hot shot. Is that they were all just kind of curious and how how I was going to do. They didn't know how good I was in the rocks. Right. Um, it was like, Oh, they were all, it was more so like, Oh shit, you're going to, you're going to have your eyes opened here. And kind of <laughs> more like that than, than, than like, Oh, here comes a hot shot type of thing. Right. So. All right. Hey, just, uh, I had this, <clears throat> Everybody's I, had this cool. I had this conversation with someone, uh, recently and I was just asking you if a situation like this whole thing, are you a person who's more made of, motivated because you love to win or because you hate to lose? Uh, I love to win. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I see. I was the same way. If someone else said they hate to lose. I'm like, I think I like I like to win more than I hate to lose. Yeah, I, because I've raced so much and so many different things and all over. Like you kind of yeah, you're gonna losing, lose. Like you you kind of know when you're gonna lose. Right. So it's and the feeling you get when you win is, I don't know. That's just that's how I like. I, if I show up to a race and and I get my ass kicked, ah, well, there's another race. It sucks, <laughs> but you know figure it out and do better the next time whereas like when you come to a race and win you're like hell yeah that feels good yeah see you know what's funny is i'll tell everybody like when i'm talking to someone about motivation and they have a bad race or something i always use you as, as an example and it's kind of reason why i brought this up too is because you're a guy who will go anywhere race anything and you make no excuses you go out there if you win you win if you don't it's like well, that's how fast i went on this day i'm not afraid to line up you know what I mean? Like the old yeah. argument, you lose every race you don't enter or whatever. You know, you're just a guy who goes out there and races. If you get beat, that person did well that day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I tried I try to be as, as like transparent as possible with my with my racing and you know, it, when there's excuses, I I say what happened. If it was just me riding like shit, I say what happened. If this is yeah. how I felt, then this is how I felt. There's no at this point, is there's no reason for me to, to make something up or lie or come up with some bullshit excuse. Yeah. Like, there's no reason for that. It just and and the thing is, is like I'm gonna try. You know, I'm gonna do the best I can. If that's if that's a six on that day, well, then yeah, that's that's the way it is. And you got to figure it out if you want to keep racing and you want to do good. And and that's what I kind of trying to drill into my kid, right? You know, you didn't, I I went through it. I went through those days where I hated to lose and cried and you know kicked my helmet and. <laughs> There's days, there's still days where I'm pissed off and I, and I, you know, I'm from mistakes, but that doesn't mean I feel so shit that, I, that I'm not going to try to race again. I don't give a shit. Nobody cares. Everybody's in their own world these days. Anyways, nobody gives a shit <laughs> how you do. Right. So yeah. be straight up and enjoy yourself and do what you like to do. Like it's, it's yeah. and it's the same. And it's the same thing with, 
you know, people saying, oh, well, you've been doing it for so long. Like, I'm like, when I'm, when I feel like I'm done and I feel like I'm not having fun or I physically can't do it, then yeah, you're not going to tell me when, when I can and cannot do the stuff that I love to do. It's right. not going to happen. Right. It's, this is my, this is my, my thing and I'm going to do it how I want to do it. Right. I mean, that might rub people the wrong way because in our society you're supposed to do things, you know, in, in, uh, in a line like, but yeah, if you just, all you got to do is just take a, poke your head outside the line, to take a look around sometimes. Right. And I just like some people struggled at the supercross at Gopher Dunes and I, you know, I'm just talking to them and say, listen, man, these things just make you appreciate the good days more. I mean, you're going to have bad days. It's just don't, you know, don't be you know, whatever race as hard as you can and move on. Right. So anyway, that was yeah. your psych. Yeah. That, was, that was your psychological moment there for uh, sponsored by, I don't know who was sponsored by. But. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, and it's the same thing with those guys, you know, supercross. just, you got to stick with it. And if you didn't, and if you, and if you close your mind to, to it and just, you know, think that you suck, well then how the hell are you going to improve off of it? And if you just d- quit and don't feel like doing it anymore, then then what what good is that? You got to stick with it. You got to stick with it and figure it out because there's a way to do it. You know what I mean? It's all technique. Everybody ends up figuring it out. Yeah. At, you know, we can end up going fast, but you, you got to figure out how to race. And that's it's a different type of uh, mentality. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Well, OK, well, let's let's talk about that. Uh, the final motocross one. Obviously, you m- must have felt confident aside from your uh, sore knee and stuff. How motocrossy was it? And uh, how did the actual final race go? It was more uh, enduro crossy, I guess. It was okay. pretty tight. Um, and I think I had like over four minutes in the overall. Oh, nice. Coming coming into that. So I I kind of, uh, you know, again, like like I said, I was concerned with my knee. I didn't know if I – we had a hot lap, so that was good. And then once I – I was kind of stressed coming into it. I had to – I changed my wheel to, uh, like, a different tire for the start. Um, and then – Was it like a, st- a group start? Everybody – how did the final – Okay. Yeah, they started it. The it was rows of ten in the overall of the day, and they did two heats. And it's just your time, right? So you're still transponders. It's your time. Oh, okay. How long it takes you to do the race is what your test score will be, right? Gotcha. So they ended up doing two motos because it was, you know, it would have been too many people on the track at once. So there was twenty twenty a piece that only the top forty overall got to do the motocross race. So you had to almost qualify. Oh, okay. And yeah, so then I had first gate pick and it was a pretty, um, the inside gate was pretty dominant. It wasn't really a gate. It was just a row and it was a live right. engine start. So we just took off down the main straight and hooked, did a 90 right. So I had, uh, I definitely had an advantage coming in and yeah. And then I tried to just, just like, uh, some of the, there were some cool features, like a couple log doubles and some some wall jumps and stuff so I get to over jump some stuff and you know put on a little bit of a show I guess as best I could and and yeah it, and it was good so I and I really enjoyed my my time at the court and I think it's an event that um a lot of people should try to get to and do because it's uh you know it's a lot of time spent on your bike it's something completely different that you'll never really experience unless you do you know six days or or some sort of classic enduro in Europe so it's really fun Hey, now, is this, uh, as an event, is it easier or as difficult as a, for a spectator to watch, like as a GNCC? Because those are tough to watch, like to be in the right place and see enough racing. Was this okay to watch as a spectator, or how is this? Yeah, it is pretty cool for a spectator because it, once you get the map, you can kind of know where the where the tests are, and then you can go and park at like a pretty cool section and watch people struggle like, up this rock face or, you know what I mean? I mean, it always with enduro and and off-road it's a bit tricky because you know it is in the woods and you got to kind of know where to go but at least with this one there's so many different tests and areas that you can just kind of drive and park and and uh, find a cool spot where you where they go through and yeah but i think it's more it's more of a you know an event that you want to do experience like and, and go for it so it's fun yeah i would say i think that pretty much sums up the off-road world it's definitely about the participator not the spectator kind of thing yeah yeah exactly unless you go to like uh yeah i mean the the, the more 
there there's places too like we're big there's big tests that are in open fields and stuff that you can kind of sit back and watch watch the guys go through and i think too even with this this race this weekend at phil's track like there's five kilometers that are in these big fields and you can just like sit back and you can watch the oh, good watch the like kind of motocrossy type part of it nice all right well hey um yeah, a thanks for taking us through that and b congratulations on winning it for the first time is this uh is this kind of a thing you'll try to fit into your annual schedule now yeah definitely if if i if i can I, I will it was so so much fun and i want my son to try it too so it'd be cool for talon to do it but i think you got to be once he gets like 16 or whatever you can do the full race but um this kind of format is really cool um it definitely is uh you know what i mean it's one of the biggest yeah like you said it's been this was the 69th year it's been going since 53 you know there's been some world class people that have done it and won it so and then the big thing was that that uh it was tied 33 wins for us and canada so oh no way yeah so i got the 34th win for for canada and tipped the scale on our side well, there so. you go shut it down shut it down now <laughs> yeah, I call it, but <laughs> but it was cool, and I you know highly recommend uh, you know people. I get, and again, just even cross training, you know, I think there's going to be close to 800, 900 entries this weekend at at Phil's race, like, and it's something that um, if it'll make you a better rider, it'll make you a better motocross rider. You know what I mean? It's the same thing for the woods guys. You you want to get faster, you know, you want to you know, figure out your average speed, go ride motocross tracks and do some motocross races and get that intensity up. Like it's just, it all kind of complements itself. And then you don't get bored. I mean, right. like I've yeah, been racing for so many years it, because I change it, ride different sizes, bikes and stuff. You keep it fresh and then you don't get sick of it. Right. I find off road, it kind of teaches you, you kind of figure out the way to cry the most comfortably. You try to figure out which way you like to cry the most. Yeah, and then you learn stuff about your body. Like you can, <laughs> once you start to blow up, like because you know, not a lot of people will ever bonk, right? And they won't know that, that feeling of just complete depletion and right. what the you know the signs are of coming into that or or dealing with extreme heat, like how far you can kind of push. Off. And these off road races teach you where you your where your limits are. You can find out, like okay, like this is the signs where I'm at right before I completely bonked. Like, right. you know, I need, I need to drink or I need to eat more. And you figure out like just stuff that works for you, especially like training. Like people ask, like, what do you do for, for diet and training? Well, it's just, it's experimenting. You know, like I know that I can, you know, some people are like, Oh, I can't eat pasta. Well, I can eat pasta. You know, I, I don't, don't want to have gluten before a race. Well, I can have a big plate of pasta and have energy for two days straight. So, <laughs> You know, like everybody has their own thing. Some people like to eat red meat and steak and fish and this, this, this type of stuff. And you just, you just find out what works for you because in motocross, it's so short and such a spaced out day that you never really, you're always kind of in a, a comfort zone. Yeah. It becomes a more of an endurance event where you do have to learn uh, things like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's definitely, it's definitely fun. And it's definitely like, and for parents too, like if parents, you know, you enter your kid into a hair scramble. You know, it'll teach them good habits. Like you have to keep your feet on the pegs. You have to stand up. You can't sit down on roots. You know, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. You could, then you come onto a motocross track. You're like, oh shit, that, I can go fast standing up. You know? Yeah, yeah. And it, I find it just opens your eyes too to like watching some other people. Their style may not look like a motocross person, but man, they go fast through the trails, and you're like, how are they doing that? Exactly. <laughs> it's impressive. All right, Tyler. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time. What's uh, what's next for you? Well, besides after FMSQ, what are you gonna do? Um, yeah, we'll just, uh, see what, um, see what the schedule's like, see how, you know, see what, um, yeah, like I, I'm hosting an event at, at Callis. Okay. And, um, on October 15th, I'm doing a sprint enduro. Oh, cool. Um, so I'm, I've got to, you know, I'll be there getting ready for that. So, uh, yeah. And then a little bit of downtime to be honest, um, it's been pretty hustle, hustle and bustle the last you know, year. So now I get to hang out and chill, maybe do some trail riding with some buddies and Talon and spend time with the girls and like, uh, yeah, maybe do some, maybe get Heidi riding a bit more and do some stuff like that and hang out and yeah, prep for the prep for my race. And you're heading into hockey season for Talon. 
Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's already he's already gone full full steam ahead in hockey. So. <laughs> awesome. Hey, okay, well, um, twenty twenty four, you coming back? What, what's the deal, uh, motocross wise? Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the plan. I think um, yeah, me and Harrison again, and like we had two year deals. So um, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, I just want to keep rolling with the schedule that works for me. You know, I get to it's pretty good that. Alex and Parts Canada and stuff give me this opportunity to kind of, you know, I have my certain races that I'm obligated to do. And then, you know, I kind of do some stuff in the off season, you know, and go down and do some GNCCs hopefully. And yeah, we'll see. I'm, I'm just uh, kind of waiting to, to hear what the exact plan is. I think that's too coming up in the next month or so. Okay. We'll have everything ironed out and buttoned up for uh, the plan for next season. Awesome. All right. Hey, last thing, let me ask you. Uh, we got a pretty solid team. We got our two champions going to Motocross of Nations and the guy who finished second, Jess Pettis in the 450. Uh, predictions for how Team Canada is going to do? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I hope they they crush it. I hope they get the best. Um, yeah, let's say let's get let's hope, let's get, see what uh, they can do. I mean, it would be cool to get a top five. I mean, I mean, obviously, it's it's anything can happen, but to to Obviously, we want to raise the bar and get the best result for our country that we've ever gotten. So that's that's always the goal going in, and I hope they can do it because they have the skill to do it. All right, man. Well, hey, uh, yeah, thanks for taking us through the whole story time here. I was uh, Like I say, it wasn't a whole lot of work on my part. I just kind of, hey, Tyler, what happened? So that was, I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, anytime. I enjoy I'm getting to tell the story every once in a while, but, you know, hopefully it opened some eyes and, like I say, try to, you know, get more people involved in, in this. So they're not so, um, yeah, open-minded with different sorts of racing. All right. Awesome, man. Well, Hey, before we let you go, do you want to uh, thank anyone or how do you, uh, how do you want to enter? Yeah. I just thank all the sponsors that, uh, that continue to support me and the team and, um, yeah, my kid and yeah, I just a big help to, uh, Jim, Jim Coleman from Wheelsport helps me at all these FMSQ. So he does all my gas stops and, and uh gives me good support and he races the morning race so he always lets me know how uh how the course is and some tricks and tips so uh yeah thank him and then gas gas and thor uh parts canada and oakley uh, everybody my family of course and um yeah all the the motorcycle community in canada thanks appreciate it all right, man. Well, hey, good luck. This it's sorry. This weekend coming up is uh, FMSQ's final. At yep, this Phil's? this weekend, Victoriaville. If you're on the fence of ever doing a FMSQ or a cross country race, this would be the one to start at. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, I think we got some good weather around too, so it should be uh, should be another good one. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. It's good, and uh, yeah, we'll have some fun. All right, man. As always, thanks for taking the time with us. We appreciate it, and uh, good luck this luck this weekend, and we'll see you somewhere soon. Yep. Thanks, Billy. Talk okay, to man. Bye bye.